Hey, in this video I'm showing you how I made a hang balance robot lamp. Or what I like to call a hang bot lamp. I got the idea from the hang balance lamp, which is basically an LED strip that is inside of a frame with two magnetic balls that act as a switch. I thought it'd be really cool to combine this concept with a robot lamp. Here's how I did it. DIY lamp kits like this are available at artisanshop.ca. A link is in the description below. Let's get started. I started off with an oval I had cut out of some Norwegian maple. It was a tree that had come down from my backyard. It doesn't really matter what material you use for the base. You could even use a piece of 2x6 if you wanted to. The best thickness to work with is about an inch and a half. This is a little less than that, but I was still able to make it work. You just need to make sure that there's enough space for the switch that you're using to fit inside the wood. We'll talk more about the switch later in the video. I use a jointer jig, a few shims, and a planer to flatten one side of the oval, then flip it over and pass it through again on its own to make both sides parallel to each other. After sanding and applying some oil, we can now start building the robot. With my pipe lamps, I always like to do a dry run without any wiring, just so I can get a feel of how it's going to look like before I commit to the build. I experimented with a few different designs for the head, but in the end, I decided to do a mirror image of my first robot lamp. Next, I used a rag and some bar saws to remove any dirt and grease that were on the fittings. We can now start building the legs. It's really important to make sure all the fittings are very tight, especially when working with 45 degree and 90 degree elbows. If they're not tight, the lamp will go all willy-nilly on you. To help with this, I used two 10-inch pipe wrenches as well as a vise to help line up the fittings. Once the legs were built, I centered them on the oval and traced a circle around both of the feet. Then I drilled out the center of both circles using a 1-inch spade bit. We now need to route out channels on the bottom of the base for the wiring and the switch. To keep the wood from moving while routing out the channels, I took two strips of masking tape and put them across the top of the base. Then I put two more strips on my work surface and super glued the two surfaces together. I used a compact router with a half inch straight bit to remove the material. After making multiple passes, the switch was able to fit inside. You can see how I stepped down the channel and rounded the corners so the wiring could sit naturally. Removing the wood was as simple as prying it up and pulling off the tape. It's now time to fasten the legs to the base. I screwed a three quarter inch closed nipple into the bottom of one of the feet and tightened with channel locks. Then I put the nipple inside of one of the holes and started to rotate the legs clockwise. A one inch hole is sized so that the threads of a three quarter inch nipple will bite into the wood as you turn it. Continue to turn until the nipple is completely buried and the other foot lines up with the hole. You can see here how the nipple has protruded above the bottom of the channel. This is why having a thicker base would have been a bit more convenient. To fix this, I grinded off the obstruction with an angle grinder and used a file to remove any sharp edges. It's now time for some wiring. I taped some PowerPro 100 pound test fishing line to some 18 gauge wire. Each length was about 24 inches. I then passed the wire up the hole without the nipple and pulled it all the way through, which allowed me to pull the fishing line through as well. I then separated the two and passed the wire up through the opposite hole. Next was adding the four inch nipple and the four way cross fitting. It's important that the fishing line does not twist with the wire as we add fittings. This will cause unwanted friction with the fishing line as it's pulled to activate the switch. Moving forward, we build one arm going down using Street 90's nipples and elbows, passing the string through each fitting as we go. Moving to the other arm, we use the exact same fittings, only we angle the arm up instead of down. You'll notice that the four-way cross fitting is angled about 20 degrees off center. The goal is to position the hands of the robots directly above and below each other. Moving up the neck, we have two closed nipples and a 45 degree elbow. The head is an inch and a quarter to half inch reducing elbow. With all the fittings tightened up, we can now wire in the light socket. For this I'm using a pigtail, they fit nicely inside of inch and a quarter fittings. If you don't know how to solder, I highly recommend a video by Chris Fix, I'll link it in the description below. I added some electrical tape to where I removed the insulation for some extra protection, then lined the inside of the fitting with some clear silicone. You could use hot glue for this, but I find the silicone easier to work with. Next was pushing the socket inside while pulling from the other end, then securing it with tape into position to dry. It's now time to wire in the switch. To help with this, I clamped the base upside down on the edge of my work circuit. The switch we are using is called a micro switch. It's a momentary switch that is activated with very little physical force. It has three terminals. One is connected to a normally open circuit, one is connected to a normally closed circuit, and the third one is for your common connection. We're going to be connecting the power wire into the normally open connection. From there, power will go through the switch when it's activated and come out of the common 
connection. If we wire the lamp in the opposite direction, the lamp will still work, but it means that the normally closed terminal will always be live when the lamp is off, which could pose an electrical risk if it came into contact with anything. Skipping ahead, you can see that by wiring it this way, we eliminate that risk, as we only see very low voltage when the switch is in its on or off position. Before installing the switch, we need to drill a hole through the end of the lever, which was easily done with a drill press. I cut about six feet of 18-2 vintage style lamp cord and use female crimp terminal connectors to make the connections. As you can see, power is going into the normally open terminal, then coming out of the common terminal. Then we solder the two common wires together, which do not go through the switch at all. Using proper electrical terms, the switch is wired in series. It was at this point that I realized the power wire should have some bracing in the event that it gets aggressively pulled. So I pulled the router back out to cut another channel and secured the wire with some metal strapping. We now need to fasten the fishing line to the lever of the micro switch, which should be located directly above the center of the hole. With the string fastened, we now need to fix the micro switch into position. This was done by adding hot glue on each side of the switch. Hot glue is an insulator, so for some extra protection, I added some above and below the exposed terminal. Next was wiring up the plug end, making sure that the hot wire goes to the gold screw and the common wire goes to the silver screw. Then we stick in a bulb, plug it in, and test for success. Next was playing a game of fetch with my dog. Then I stuck on some adhesive felt to cover up the wiring and to make for a scratch-free surface. It's time to attach the magnetic balls. To do this, I took a half-inch plug and I drilled a small hole through the center of it. I passed a piece of fishing line through the hole, then kneaded together some bonding putty and wrapped the fishing line around. Packing it in tight with a pencil made sure it was locked in place. The wooden balls had pre-drilled holes that were conveniently sized the same as my neodymium magnets. Just make sure that the polarities are opposite when supergluing them into position. I calculated that I needed about an inch and a half of string between the hands of the robot and the balls. Wrapping the string around some more bonding putty, I used a nail punch to push it inside of the hole. After screwing in the plug on the top end, we can now work on the lower ball. This was a bit tricky because you want the string to max out with about 3 eighths of an inch between the two balls. I raised the ball to my desired height and marked the string where it meets the ball. I cut about 2 inches above my mark and attached the string to the ball using the same method as before. After the bonding putty hardened, I decided to paint the balls gold for a nicer look. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Unique lamps like this, as well as other ones are available at artisanshop.ca.